What's up, everybody? Uh, we're gonna give you the latest update on Leroy here. Uh, there's been a lot of questions. Hopefully we can answer some of those for you today. Um, where we're at on Leroy is we've body worked the foam, we've primered it, we've body worked it, we've primered it again, we're body working it again. We'll still primer it one more time and do a final block on it. It's almost there, it's almost ready for the, the final primer. Um, once we're done with that final blocking, then we'll put our mold release on and, and go to mold with it. Uh, we're taking our time with it. This is a car, it's gonna go over 200 miles an hour. If some of these body lines are off or asymmetrical or whatever, it could literally push this car off the track. So we're taking our time and making sure that everything is right and where it needs to be. That being said, uh, you know, it, this kind of stuff takes time. We're body working over foam. We're not body working over fiberglass or metal or something like that. Foam is not as forgiving as, as metal is. So we have a very fine membrane of primer on here that we're working with, that we're blocking with. Otherwise you go into the foam and it causes a bunch of problems. It's not normal body work. It's, it's not what the average body shop does. What we do is, it's a totally different world. Uh, most body shop guys that have come in here to work are just like, I can't even grasp this concept and they, they don't really do a great job at it. So that hopefully answers some of y'all's questions as far as the bodywork portion, where we're at on it, where it's headed, and, and the time frame involved. So we'll, uh, we'll address some more things in a minute. So there's been a lot of questions about uh, the door situation on Leroy. You know, uh, this car is gonna be racing different types of races and stuff. Some require doors, some don't. Um, but the ones that require doors, it will have doors. This whole body will be a full body lift uh, body, but it will also have the door option. The reason we don't make the doors as a separate piece is because we need all these body lines to line up perfectly. So um, what's gonna happen is we'll make the mold, the doors will be lined up perfectly, and then we can come in, cut the doors out, add our door stops, the, the lips on the backside, and when, when it's all put back together, the body lines will be perfect. So to answer your question, yes, Leroy will have doors. Okay, so this front end is, uh, been a real pain in the butt for us. Uh, when we first assembled all the foam, we realized that the angle was a little off on the front. Uh, it just didn't translate well to where we, when we put it together. So what we did was we put the VR headsets on, overlaid the 3D model over the physical plug, and adjusted the front end according to the model, and we got it dialed in perfect. So that was just one of the small little struggles we had in, in creating this thing. So uh, we got it dialed in and now we're good to go. So a little more information about the CNC problem that we had. If you've worked with CNC before, you know that every now and then there's gonna be some little variable that gets thrown off or something happens and you don't know it until you've cut the whole part and you're, you know, you're too late to fix it. So that's what happened here, one number somehow magically got changed during the process of us setting up a CNC cut and the whole front end of the car was cut wrong. So that meant one dimension was cutting a little bit wider than the other dimension, which caused everything to just be off slightly. And it's not something you can see with the naked eye usually. It's something that we finished it, pulled it off the table, started putting everything together, got everything glued up, bolted up, and we didn't even notice it when it was sitting there in the car, but what we did was we brought the VR unit back in here and were able to match everything up. So everything from the front um, wheel well back matched up absolutely perfect, as you can see in that video. And then from that middle wheel well forward, something was wrong. And seeing that in the VR and seeing the difference sent off alarm bells. So what we did at that point was, this is all the, the material that was part of the car. We removed, had to break it all apart, it was glued together, remove it, uh, throw it aside, recut that entire front end. And that set us back a good amount, but it's something that has to be done in order for this to be perfect. We have to make sure this is as good as possible, being that this is gonna be going over 200 miles per hour. So 
redid it, rebuilt the whole front end, and we were able to move forward from there. So another issue we ran into, we got the front end dialed in, you know. That's gonna be a problem. So this front end, this has been kind of problematic for us, just trying to get it dialed in right. We put the VR headset on, got it all dialed in. Um, and then later on, shortly after we got it perfect, we find out that Cletus blew the motor in Leroy. And then we immediately went into man, are the turbos going to move when he pulls that motor and replaces it or whatever? And, and this thing was built to such tight tolerances that we were just concerned about that. And then we got to thinking, well, if there's ever issues in the future, he needs to have a little bit of wiggle room in there. So we actually cut out this middle section after we got everything dialed in and redid it and recut it to accommodate, you know, a little more wiggle room for the turbos and for any possible future situations. These humps right here actually get cut out. The turbo will sit in here in an, in an open space. Um, we just rounded it off just for the reasons of mold making and stuff. But now this is way more user friendly on their end as far as motor placement and all that. So one more thing that we had to work out to get to this point. So there's been a lot of questions online about when we actually do make the mold and then make the parts, how are the parts going to be made, uh, how strong are they going to be, how much is it going to weigh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Using a chopper gun versus hand laying by axle, this and that. Um, the idea is to make this thing as light as possible, but there's already over 200 pounds of ballast in the car. So I believe just estimating because we build stuff all the time, we're going to be in, in the 100 pound range on this. Could be under, probably gonna push more like 110, 112 would be my best bet, somewhere in there. Um, so it would just, they could reduce some of the ballast in the car. It would more than compensate for the weight of the body and that's not gonna be an issue. Um, we are going to chop this body, but I'm gonna be putting core mat for rigidity to, and to strengthen this, which core mat is kind of like a, it's a balsa wood material base, but it makes it extremely strong and uh, doesn't allow the glass to flex a lot. So yeah, we are gonna chop it. We may lay by axle in certain mount points that are critical to the strength as far as where it mounts to the car, but we won't know where any of that is until we do a fitment. So we're definitely gonna chop it. It's gonna have some core mat in it, and then it may have some by axle for rigidity in a couple of areas, but the idea is to keep it lightweight we're just moving air with this thing. So, you know, there's all these debates between like laying, hand laying and chopping and this and that. And there are different strengths. Biaxle is extremely strong compared to chopping, but chopped fiberglass is extremely strong in its own right. So it's all about a weight to strength ratio and, and, and we're gonna dial all that in. So don't worry, we're gonna build it right. We're not gonna fail you guys. We're not gonna fail Cletus and we're not gonna fail ourselves. We're not here to look like idiots. Although I manage to look like an idiot all the time. All right, so I understand that not everybody understands body work and how that process works. So I'm just gonna touch base on that for those of you that just aren't in that world. Uh, what we're looking at here, this whole thing is made out of foam. We shoot a primer that we use specifically in, in the fiberglass industry on top of it. That's all this gray. Now. When you start blocking and sanding and getting this straight, you're gonna have low points and high points. The high points, you sand through and you're good. But all the low points have to be filled in, which is where body filler comes into play. So it's a two-part substance. We mix it up, fill in you know, all the low spots, come back, block it out straight. And that's why it looks so patchy in this form. Uh, different color fillers tend to be different things. Some are glazes, some are body fillers. Glazes tend to be a much uh, smoother, better surface for us as far as going to mold. Um, but all this will get primered back over. This thing will be one color when it goes to mold. We'll block it, final block, wax it, mold release, and it'll be beautiful. But that's what's going on here. 
to get to these points, I assure you, this is super smooth. It doesn't look like it, but it is. To get to this point, you have to sand and sand and sand some more. And then you prime it and then you go back to sanding even more. This is so many hours of blocking and sanding and all the air tools in the world are fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, you end up using just hand sanding techniques to really dial it in. So it's hard to explain how much time is put into this body work. It is the majority of what we do here. And it's kind of like any good painter will tell you, it's 90% prep work, 10% painting. It's the same thing with a mold. That's 90% prep work, sanding and all that, getting it ready for the mold process. The mold process will turn it in a day or two. This is months of sanding already. So that's what you're looking at. That's where we're at. It's kind of a boring thing. Sanding is boring. So we'll try to spare you a lot of that. I want a root beer. I'll get you off the shit. Not me. I want a this. I didn't even get the good root beer. A and W. Oh, yeah. A and W. Does so it get better than that? A and W is not the good root beer, dog. Huh? Nah, That's Mugs cool. is way better. Yeah. Mugs. Got that pool on it. I don't want it. So. Yeah. Mugs is way better, dude. All right. So we went ahead and got the body into the booth this morning. Put the third and hopefully the final coat of primer on it. Next step is to go through and block this bad boy down and get it to a smooth finish. After that, we should be able to go to straight to mold with it. All right, everybody. So we've got Leroy almost done with the body work. As you've seen in this video, the next step is going to mold. Uh, once we go to mold, we'll be going right into making a part, which old Cletus himself is going to come help us with. So stay tuned for that. Oh man, what do we got here? Uh, our buddies over at Horizon Hobby sent us a box of goodies for a project we're working on. Oh. I figured we open it up and see what's inside. Let's get in this thing. We happy. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to see what's in this box. Oh yeah.